Discussions of Mango City Hotel. A lot of discussions since, since Saturday, and of course, you know, it's South Africans typically, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, on a polarized side of describing that legacy. How would you sum it up? South Africans who are now stopping to just see him uh, off. What would, in your view, be what you should uh, uh, is hold on to, you know, as how we would remember him? I think uh, I would start from the time I watched him when he was the leader of uh, KwaZulu, KwaZulu as a homeland and how he fought for the people of uh, this area, especially on the area of education. Uh, him and Matanzimo were more or less the same when it comes to putting education as a priority number one for a nation. Mm. And both of them, of course, were disciplinarians, mm. and they didn't take nonsense. <laughs> Whether you are from another political party, they tell you your story on the spot. Yeah. So if you look at KD Matanzima, Nkosi Butelezi, as well as Nkosi Mandela, Nelson Mandela, you find some similarities when it comes to issues principled positions. Mm. If they have taken a decision, they take a decision and they are able to justify why they took such a decision. Kwasi Mutelezi has been all over in South Africa and the world as well. He had visited us in the Eastern Cape, especially when there are issues related to church matters. He was an Anglican, yeah. working closely with a number of bishops. and. Uh, I think uh, in terms of politics, of course, we have seen him in Parliament that uh, he would, uh, he did, we didn't mince his words mm. when he was addressing the issues, the challenges facing the, the ruling party in Parliament. Yeah. The, the, there's this other part uh, ab about him. You mentioned education that mm. we hear, but how he actually elevated from a traditional perspective the, the culture of Amazon. Oh yes, he has been a pillar of, the st uh, of strength there, and um, you cannot accept, uh, I mean, deny the fact that he is the chief in the first instance, in course. So it's, it's an easy job for him to do. And the fact that he was appointed uh, a prime minister by the Zulu people, it means that they knew that uh, he would uh, guard against any intrusion. However, that game was also, we also saw it during negotiations when he bargained. This is for, 394 negotiations. Yes, when he bargained for the, the issue related to land for the Zulu people. In Gonyama Trust. In Gonyama Trust. And uh, of course, uh, it's still a controversial decision. Remember also that Nkosi Butelezi was uh, for a federal system, yes. uh, which uh, as a compromise led to the current uh, provinces, which I, I always dub them as uh, nothing else but glorified homelands, these provinces. Because a duplication of services, and uh, I don't see any need for them. That's why when I was in charge of Transkai, I was advocating for return of Transkai back to South Africa and that we have formed the part of a unitary state mm. where the national government firstly would improve the infrastructure of all the townships and the rural areas, uh, townships in South Africa to be on the same par. Mm. But alas, mm. we were confronted with the stealing of state resources instead. Yeah. What, what, how do you perceive his relationship with the ANC? Because especially when you, when you met him and, and, and we're going towards 1994, right? It became a big issue uh, in terms of stabilizing KZN, etc. What was your own, because he, he always insisted that he was formed with the, with the permission of the ANC, etc. We don't always find too many people willing to confirm that kind of approach, but you know, but what was your own perception about their relationship? 
and do you well, think that that, that relationship for the might have started well but uh, as yeah. we know it yeah. ended up uh, leading to a number of uh, unfortunate incidents i think there was a breakdown of communication at some stage what the ANC should have done if I was in their boots when they were in exile yeah. would have been to discipline their cadres first to okay. say we are going to have someone working inside South Africa. Yeah. This is Gosi Butelezi and the IFP, but they, they don't seem to have done that. And then the, 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 the hawks within the ANC dubbed him as an enemy, as part of the uh, collaborator. Yeah. And for instance, when we opted to work with ANC in 1988, early 88, yeah. we said to them, we will give you a space to operate, but please don't use the Transkai as a springboard to attack South Africa because we won't have the equipment to defend you and us as well. So it, those kinds of discussions when you are, you are involved in a revolutionary exercise of, of that nature are necessary. Yeah, and then that didn't happen. As we're talking to you, General Holomisa, we're seeing Prince Zuzifa Butelezi having arrived now here at the Prince Mangusu uh, Regional Stadium together with uh, Reverend Musa Zondi, who's currently the person who's running, uh, chairing the uh, Prince Mangusu Butelezi Foundation. And uh, he was for like 13 years, from mid 80s to mid 90s, he was the leader of uh, the, he was the national leader of the National Youth Brigade of uh, the IFP. Do you think uh, on that uh, line that you're just responding to, General, before we let you go, in terms of reconciliation between the IP and the ANC, we've had a lot being spoken about now recently. From what you know, I mean, from your observations as well, as you hear this analysis that is being done post his death, do you think the IFP and the ANC would ever reconcile? I think they can easily reconcile using the wish of uh, Kosi Butelis that he died knocking at the door of the ANC. Now, if they want to work together, <clears throat> it would be easy because they have worked together before. So all what they need is just to go and turn the page where Mandela and uh, Kosi Butelis were working together in the interest of the country not necessarily in the interest of individuals or positions and so on. So that uh, reconciliation program must be sustained for the interest of the country. Yeah. Do you have any misgivings when you look at his legacy or his life, uh, his lives and times yourself? I mean, a, as a politician, as a leader in, in, in your own right? No, I don't have because I never, uh, he was never in my uh, trajectory. My focus when I was in charge of Transkai was to remove apartheid in Pretoria, remove the architects of apartheid, yeah. not other people who are deemed or are deemed to be uh, assisting them or accused of assisting apartheid. So our our stand was very clear in in Transkai. One of the things that uh, people are, are, are referred to a lot is the fact that he became one of the first ministers of the new democratic order and under the government of national unity. Right? I see that your, your, your party decided not to be part of the moonshot and, and stuff. Do you think that, uh, first of all, that their coalition or, 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 or pre predetermined coalition could stand on the way of that reconciliation? Secondly, on an overall basis, do you think that the, a government of national unity may just be what this country needs? In other words, not one party taking everything, but, but, but more parties working together to try and get us back to, to a trajectory of, of, of development and so on, like we saw in 1994. I don't think the moonshot will, uh, will, will, will take IFP anywhere, or the moonshot itself will take anywhere. off. Yeah, so I think it's is dead before it has so it is the moon. Yes, no, it's got. So the, the politics of coalition will be across the board. ANC will be free to talk to DA, 
free to talk to IFP. Mm. But in terms of co cooperation between ANC and IFP, that should not be linked to any kind of a form of a government. Yeah. The question is how do we deal with the continued depth of political assassinations where yes. people are accusing each other. Yeah. So it has to it, it has to address such uh, programs, uh, problems rather, if ANC and IFP decide to work together. And it's long overdue. Yeah. But overall, do you think a government of national unity idea is old or it's a progressive one? Because Come again. If you want power to be first and so on, but at the end of the day, the voters will decide, and then we'll still be left with a big question mark of whether or not we should try to and revoke or invoke the spirit of 1994, where people with extreme views, I mean, to, to actually well, get it, declared it, to be a deputy president was no. something that would have been unimaginable just even a year prior. Well, it would depend to a party which has won with majority or more numbers, put it that way. Mm -hmm. then it, that party would be free to invite any political mm -hmm. yeah. party. But if ANC, for instance, were to invite IFP, uh, for them that would also achieve the, the main goal of uh, assisting people and reconciling. I remember also that KZN has got the biggest population. And if there's stability here, the rest of the country will be stable. stable.